I guess everyone can see the screen. Yes, Prabhuji. Uh, you can see the words, right? 1724? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay, Anthony. Thank you very much. So, so today <clears throat> we are going to discuss the continue discussion of the prayer by Arjun. Um, <clears throat> so let's start. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudire Nashta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Akuti Uttama Shloke Bhaktiri Bhutaneshtiki Mandravije Tamanupe Tamape Tatyam Dvaipayano Vyahaka Tarajvahava Tretitan Mayatayo Tarvo Vinedus Sam Sarvabhu Tardayam Munivana Tosvi so, verse 24 from 7th chapter, 1st canto. Sa, sa eva jiva lokasya maya mohita chetasaha vidat se svena virena shreyo dharma vilakshanam Sa eva jiva lokasya maya mohita chetasaha vidat se svena virena shreyo dharma vilakshanam Sa eva jiva lokasya maya mohita chetasaha Vidatse Svena Viryena Shreyo Dharma Dilakshanam. So let's read the word by word translation. Uh, yeah. Sir, the transcendence, Eva, certainly, Jeeva of the conditioned living beings, Maya Mohita, captivated by the illusory energy, Chetasaha, by the heart, Vidat say, execute, Svena, by your own, Viryena, influence, Shreyaha, ultimate good, Dharma Adi, four principles of liberation, Lakshanam, characterized by. Translation, and yet, though you are beyond the purview of material energy, you execute the four principles of liberation, characterized by religion, and so on for the ultimate good of the conditioned souls, purported by His Divine Grace, Shila Kesi Bhakti Vedanta Shankarupad Ki Jai. The personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, out of His causeless mercy, descends to the manifested world without being influenced by the material modes of nature. He is eternally beyond the material manifestations. He descends out of His causeless mercy only to reclaim the fallen souls who are captivated by the illusory energy. They are attacked by the material energy and they want to enjoy her yeah. in the uh, Although, in a sense, the living entity is unable to enjoy, uh, unable to enjoy, one is eternally the servitor of the Lord, and when he forgets this position, he thinks of enjoying the material world. But factually, he is an illusion. The Lord descends to eradicate this false sense of enjoyment and thus reclaim conditioned souls back to God. <coughs> that is the all merciful nature of the Lord for the fallen souls. Shabrabad ki jai. Um, yeah, so let's chant the Mangala Charana. Om Agnanti Mirandasya Dnananjana Shalakaya Chakshuron Militam Yena Tasme Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Radati Sopadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnamamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathantam Tam Sajivam <coughs> Sa Advaitam Sa Avadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam 
श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सहगण रिता श्री विशाखांच हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्ते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी ऋषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरे प्रिय पंचकंत कृपा सिंधु पावन वैष्णवेभ्यो जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधर श्रीवास अति कौरवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो लेट्स चैंड द वर्ड्स अगेन स एव जीव लोकस माया मोहित चेत सह विधत्से स्वेन वीरण श्रेय धर्मादिलक्षण एंड येट दो यू आर बियॉन्ड द परव्यू ऑफ द मटेरियल एनर्जी यू एक्जीक्यूट द फोर प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ लिबरेशन कैरेक्टराइज बाय रिलीजन एंड सो ऑन फॉर द अल्टीमेट गुड ऑफ द कंडीशन सोल्स प्रविश्य मम आच मीमां प्रसूता संजीवयत्य अखिल शक्तिधर स्वधा हस्तचरण श्रवणादी प्राणान नमो भगवते पुरुषा सो लेट्स कम टू द बैकग्राउंड ऑफ व्हाट्स हैपनिंग हियर अश्वत्थामा ही हैज killed four five sleeping sons of draupadi which is as we were going through the translations here he has done everything against the basic principles of morality the rules of the battle or the war and the rules of basically the humanity means the human values so moral principles religious principles uh rules of the battle or the war and um the rules of artha means how to continue your livelihood in this world and all the rules he has broken so he is liable for punishment and as per the rules of the law uh, of the dharma um he can be killed so that's the background behind it so he is he is doing everything which is which will compel him to be killed by arjun and that's where now arjun is saying i have to um he gives the promise to draupadi that i will catch this criminal and you will you can stand on his head and take the bath uh after performing the funeral ceremony of the five sons um so that's the background um he though he is a son of brahmana but he has not in a slightest manner he is not acting or he is his behavior is not like a brahmana so <clears throat> in so in this perspective the scripture say he is dvija bandhu that means he is just born in a brahman family the son of dronacharya but he is not a qualified brahman as prabhu shila prabhupad emphasizes on, on this principles throughout his all the purports that son of brahmana is not brahman brahman is by qualification um or vedanta sutra and skanda puran in many other places the presentation of the grammatical details might be a bit different but the verse is janmat or janmana jayate shudra samskara dvijamjate by birth everyone is shudra by samskara person becomes brahman and how what are those samskaras we have discussed this in our earlier discussions that first the person is eligible um when the person is eligible he is accepted accepted by the guru by the spiritual master um 
that he can perform the basic duties and come to the principle of the he is a right student um once that acceptance is done in our sampradaya that is harinam diksha uh, that guru our spiritual master has accepted the disciple now you are eligible to perform the basic devotional service the next one is a dvija when spiritual master gives the initiation to wear the sacred thread for men and for women he gives the mantra and then after that the person is supposed to focus and study the scriptures be well versed with that and the verse we have discussed earlier is nahi gnanena sadrusham pavitram iha vidyate tat swayam yoga samsiddha kalenaatmani vidyati means the sublime the supreme knowledge of bhakti is beyond all the mystical knowledges the knowledge of the vedas nahi gnanena sadrusham pavitram iha vidyate that is the supreme pavitra no that is the, the divine knowledge tat swayam yoga samsiddha when you are connecting that knowledge with the devotional service kalenaatma nivindati that is beyond the purview of this material world that means beyond the purview of the time it is not time bound so that's what the verse in the fourth chapter of the bhagavad gita we have discussed earlier so now here shila prabhupa gives something amazing and it is a right occasion and such a perfect um, occasion to discuss the gordhan leela of the lord and that we will come little later um, so he is beyond the purview of material energy yeah that's what shila prabhupada is giving here the here as the four principles of liberation what prabhupada talks here and he gives the four principles uh this is is by giving the perfect purport which is a combination of all the four principles we have heard so far in from bhagavad gita what are the basic four principles dharma artha kama moksha following the religious duties um earning money in a lawful manner that is artha shastra the first is uh, dharma shastra um kama fulfilling our requirements of our body of our senses in a right perspective um that is not doing anything which is morally legally religiously uh against uh, against these rules so that is what the dharma artha kama following the principles of our um, sense gratification or the requirements of our sense gratification and body that is kama uh, and moksha and following all this at the end uh, in our um, sampradaya or in the in the path of bhakti we are in moksha is basically situating in the eternal service of the supreme personality of godhead so that is the four principles what are the other four chaturvarnyam is also principle so brahmacharya grahastha vanaprastha and samyas so those are also four principles what are the other four principles um that is the varnashram dharma um, brahman kshatriya vaishya shudra so all those four principles when person fits his life in those four principles it comes to the point of what propad is giving here what is the first point he gives here he gives here that lord bestows his causeless mercy and that and in that way he reclaims the fallen souls who are captivated by the illusory energy yeah religious principles dharma we can come here then whichever varna you are um, situated in following the prescribed duty that's again comes to the same point here the second he descends to the material world to eradicate this false sense of enjoyment among conditioned souls so sense of that comes to what kama 
fulfilling the desires descent he descends to the material world to eradicate this false sense of enjoyment so he exemplifies exemplifies how to live in this world and by establishing the principles of dharma yeah so that's the verse um and then he does not get influenced without being influenced by the material modes of nature we'll see some of the verses from bhagavad gita you must have seen the tabs on on the shared screen so we'll go through that so it's basically comes to the 15.10 uh, we have discussed this very very beautiful poetic verse uh, some some sessions back um so artha we came to the point that descends to the material world eradicate and does without being influenced by material modes of nature so what that means is artha following our duties um not getting attached to it so lord ex- gives us that principle that without being influenced by the material modes of nature and that's what this whole purport prophet writes here actually the, the points i am talking about are from this purport only and then the last point uh, is from this purport is he is eternally beyond the material manifestation and that is the moksha part what prophet is uh, giving here right transcending this whole modes of material nature material manifestation and being situated in his service eternally so that's what uh, uh, the last principle is and this this is these are the four principles uh, prophet is emphasizing in the in the translation so let's go to the point of fifth, uh, first one he is beyond the purview of material energy and the three verses three or we can say three or four verses um we could think and uh, we can refer to here is 10.3 yo mama jamana yo mama jamana nimcha vettilo uh, vettiloka maheshwaram asammudha samarteshu sarve papaihi pramuchyate so yes who can read the translation Lidavata ji Okay I'm happy to read it Yes yes sir of course please do Um he who knows me as the unborn as the beginning less as the supreme lord of the of all the worlds he only undiluted among men is freed from all sins Yes excellent thank you So as stated in the 7th chapter 7.3 manushyanam sahasreshu kashchit yatati siddhaye those who are trying to elevate themselves to the platform of spiritual realization are not ordinary men they are superior to millions and millions of ordinary men who have no knowledge of spiritual realization but out of those actually trying to understand their spiritual spiritual situation one who can come to the understanding that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead the proprietor of everything the unborn is the most successful spiritually realized person in that stage only when one has fully understood krishna's supreme position can one be free from completely complete free completely from all sinful reactions so which verse prabhupada is again referring to here any any guess from anyone one who can come to the understanding that krishna is the supreme personality of god it lord says this verse in seventh chapter sarva loka maheshwara that that verse hari krishna prabhu ji yeah this that yeah that is bhuktaram yadna tapasam nice mata ji peace for peace formula that is um, mm-hmm. here this specific verse uh, thank you for that that is very important bahunam janmanavante jnanavan mantra pradyate but the but out of those actually trying to understand their spiritualization one who can come to the understanding that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead bahunam janmanam birth after birth, after service, many births if one comes to the point that yes lord is my shelter 
the proprietor of everything, the unborn, is the most successful spiritually realized person. Very important point. So, yeah, rest of the is actually the glorification of uh, what Lord's position is. Um, you all can read that later. Second verse is the famous verse Prabhupada quotes very frequently. Um, I also love and reciting this verse because it's very poetic. It gives the very depth of the value of um, our sampradaya, our basic principle. So this verse is Arjuna Vacha Param Brahma Param Dhamma Pavitram Paramam Bhavan Purusham Shashvatam Divyam Adidevam Majam Vibhum Ahustvam Rishaha Sarve Devarshi Naradastatha Asito Devalo Vyasa Vyasaha Swayam Chaiva Brahmishime Who would like to read the translation? That's very purifying verse. Very, very yes, powerful. please, Prabhuji. Yes, Nataji. Please do. Translation Arjuna said, You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the ultimate abode, the purest, the absolute truth. You are the eternal, transcendental, original person, the unborn, the greatest. All the great sages, such as Narada, Asita, Devala, and Vyasa, confirm this truth about you. And now you yourself are declaring it to me. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. So when this verse is spoken by Arjuna, after Chatushloki Gita, Aham Sarvasya Prabhu 10.8, and then Machita Madhvada Prana, and then Tesham Sabdha Yuktanam, and the last one is Tesham Evanu Kampartam. Those four verses, when Lord gives that Chatushloki Gita, and at, after that, Arjun speaks this verse. Very powerful, very beautiful. It's a very meditative verse. So um, that's the confirmation of the Lord's supreme position. So that's the um, second set of verses, 12 and 13. And we'll go to the fifth, 15th verse. Swayamevatmanamanam matnamanam vethatpam purushottama bhuta bhavana bhutesha deva deva jagatpate very very important verse um, again arjun is saying here indeed you alone know yourself by your own internal potency o supreme person origin of all lord of all beings god of gods lord of the universe isn't that so beautiful isn't that something so powerful that it's the confirmation the, of who that Supreme Lord is, whom we are worshipping, Aradhya Bhagavan Vrindavanam. That Supreme Lord, how how wonderful the Supreme Lord is. So Arjun gives this all the verses. Tenth uh, chapter is, is the Vibhuti Yoga, is the opulences of the Lord. And it's amazing. So that's what uh, the, he is beyond the purview of material energy and those four verses uh, we thought of discussing here. Um, of course, how to reach, how to worship the Lord. Uh, Lord has given, Krishna has given the uh, formula and that is in the 12th chapter, 6th and 7th verse. Very famous and that's again very medita meditative verse, very poetic as well. Yetu Sarvani Karmani Mai Sanyasya Matparaha Ananya Naiva Yogena Maam Dhyayanta Upasate Tesham Aham Samudharata Vritti Samsara Sagara Bhavamina Chirat Partha Maya Veshita Chetasam That's again very very purifying verse. Uh, who would like to read the translation? Any volunteer? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, yes, Sadhaji, please do. But those who worship me, giving up all their activities unto me, and being devoted to me without deviation, engaged in devotional service, and always meditating upon me, having fixed their minds upon me, O son of Pritha, for them I am the swift deliverer from the ocean of birth and death. Thank you. Thank you. So... Yes, after this, indeed you alone know yourself, your internal potency, O Supreme Person, origin of all, Lord of all beings, God of gods, Lord of the universe. How to surrender to him? 
he himself is giving the formula, the sutra here. Yeah, those who worship me, giving up all their activities unto me. So everything. Um, Ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Lord gives everything you do, you do it for me. Um, and arpana means just dedicate all the activities to him. That's what, uh, and then in 12th chapter, Lord is giving this in the, in the sutra. So that's what the verse is. Um, yeah, the purport is, it's amazing. But, uh, we are we don't have enough time otherwise it's a very very powerful purport um certainly we should read that in at least in the month of kartik so this is what um the first part of how the lord is uh, his greatness and how to surrender to him then comes the without being influenced by the material modes of nature and be how to surrender to him and lord gives those details in the 15th chapter of Bhagavad gita and we will see yeah here he confirms in the 15th chapter the 18th verse because i am transcendental beyond both the fallible and infallible and because i am the greatest i am celebrated both in the world and in the Vedas as the Supreme Person. The famous verse we have discussed some sessions back is Yam Brahma Varunendra Rudra Maruta Stunvanti Divyastave. So everyone worships the Lord directly or indirectly. And that's what he is confirming here. So without being influenced by the material modes of nature, and what is that verse? Very, very important. So, Kramantam Sitam Vapi Bhunjanam Vagunamitam Vimudhana Nukashanti Pashanti Jnana Chakshushaha. And this is very, very apt for the people in the Kali Yuga um, who are so engrossed in sense gratification um, and do not understand that our situation is basically. The verse uh, Shankaracharya has always quoted Punarapi Jananam Punarapi Maranam Punarapi Janani Jatharashayanam. We are constantly in the cycle, in the loop of uh, Janma Mrityu Jaravyadi Punarapi Jananam Punarapi Maranam. Janan means taking birth, dying again, and taking birth again. Punarapi Janani Jatharashayanam. And going through that whole process of birth and death, uh, old age and disease, everything. So, um, who, who would like to read the translation? Okay, I think I don't think there are any volunteers. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, can I read please? Yeah, of course, of course, please do. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Uh, the, the translation is a purpose. The translation you can read, we'll see the purpose later. Okay, okay. The foolish cannot understand how a living entity can quit his body, nor can they understand what sort of body he enjoys under the spell of the modes of nature. But one whose eyes are trained in knowledge can see all this. Hare Krishna. Yes, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. So again, it comes to the knowledge. So we can, all of us now know that first six chapters is a Karma Yoga. Next six, six chapters, the 12 chapter verses we just saw. That is Bhakti Yoga and last uh, chapters, six chapters is um, Jnana Yoga. And that is, why, that is why we will see the emphasis on the knowledge on a lot of verses in from 13th chapter onwards. So knowledge again, we saw that in fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, um, Lord talks about knowledge. Before that, he emphasizes that in the second chapter again. Um, especially after the 39th verse. Um, so, Jnana Chakshushaha, I think this part we have discussed a few times. Um, how many types of eyes are there? One is Charma Chakshu, which is our eye. I'm wearing glasses, so that's the eye. Second type of eye is Karana Chakshu, 
hearing and understanding. Third type of eye is a sparsha chakshu. Somebody touches us and we can feel whether there is a love or there is a hatred or so many things. So that is a sparsha chakshu. Um, then there is one more, which is divya chakshu, the divine uh, eyes, which was given to Arjun by the Supreme Lord. So there are, there are different types of chakshu uh, eyes. Um, this one gives us direct perception. Across the eyes, what we see is prati akshar. That's why it is called pratyaksha. One cannot understand the word jnana chakshu is very important, is very significant. Without knowledge, one cannot understand how a living and how a living entity leaves his present body, nor what form of body he is going to take in the next life, nor even why he is living in a particular type of body. It's a very important point here. When we receive this body, whether it's a man's body, woman's body, dog's body, cat's body, rat's body, or whatever. It is a continuation of our of our desires and what we deserve. And that's what the body everyone receives. Um, so we have to prepare what our next body is going to be. And what's the famous verse from the Bhagavad Gita Lord gives there? Yanti Deva Vrata Devan Pitrun Yanti Pitrutaha Bhutani Yanti Bhutetya Yanti Madhya Jinapima. So if the person has a desire, is a saintly person, but there is a desire for sense gratification, but higher level of very legitimate sense gratification through the channels, then the person will receive because they are meditating on the uh, devtas, on the demigods. So, yanti deva vrata deva, and they, that person will get demigods body, the heavenly body. Pitruni yanti pitruvata, somebody has very attached to their forefathers, their ancestors, and what the lineage uh, of the blood relations and everything, that person will get the body from the Pitrulok, uh, which is very much gives the attachment to the lineage to your uh, bloodline. So, Pitruni Anti Pitruta, Bhutani Anti Bhutija, a person has very sinful desires and they cannot fulfill those desires through this body, but they have excessive uh, material desires. That person will try to tap the um, fulfill, fulfillment of desires by certain abnormal, paranormal, or um, ghastly type of powers. So that person will receive the body of ghost, bhuta, ghost. Bhutani yanti bhuteja. So they will receive the sinful body. Yanti Madhya Jinoti Maam. And a person who has a desire to serve the Lord, that person will have a body suitable for the service of the Lord. And Lord is very merciful. So that will be the eternal body. And that's the promise. And this is basically what Prabhupada is, is explaining here. Um, 15.11, very, very important verse. Um, Yatato yoginas chainam, pashantyat manya vasthitam. Yatanto pya krutat mano, mano, nainam pashanti chetasaha. The endeavoring transcendentalist who are situated in self realization can see all this clearly. But those whose minds are not developed and who are not situated in self realization, cannot see what is taking place, though they may try. Very insightful a verse it is, because if we are not on the right track, right path of gaining the knowledge, practicing that uh, instructions from the knowledge and coming to the point of realization. So knowledge is jnana. Yeah? So, if we are not acquiring that knowledge, gaining the knowledge is the process is Vidya. Yeah? Uh, through the lineage, through Guru is giving Vidya to Shishya, to disciples. So that is the, that's what it is emphasized here. The, uh, the endeavoring transcendentalist who are situated in self-realization 
can see all this clearly. What is the related verse? Um, Tadvidhi Pranipate na Pariprashnana Sevaya. How to approach our spiritual master and how to come to the point of gaining the right knowledge. But those whose minds are not developed and who are not situated in self-realization cannot see what is taking place. A person who is more engrossed only in sense gratification and not does not have a desire for the path of surrender, path, for the path of bhakti, for the path of sharanagati, they will, that person will not understand. And the minds are not developed. That's what uh, translation Prabhupada is giving here. And who are not situated in self transition So the person is not on that path cannot see what is taking place because they are more engrossed in dharma uh, in in the principles of the uh, of this material world karmic reactions um, sakarma akarma vikarma out of that akarma is something which is required in the for the first part the endeavoring transcendentalist yeah and though they may try if the person who does not know what is the right knowledge? That person will never understand what to follow and what not to follow. If you don't know the do's and don'ts, you won't be able to perform your duty properly. So that's that's the point here. Um, it, it's again, it's an amazing purport. Um, yeah, already yeah, we, we, we have one more verse to go through. Um, and then we will see because we have to discuss some of the Gordon Lila as well today because it's in a very much in context with this particular verse 1724 today. So let's go to 15.16. Um, it gives a very good categorization of, uh, of the Jivatmas. Dvamimo Purusha Uloke Kshara Kshara Evacha Kshara Sarvan Kubhotani Utastok Sharavuchate. Um, Ksha is a, is a dhatu in Sanskrit. And uh, Ksha means which is stable, which is uh, Akshara and Kshara. So, yeah, we will talk about that later. Otherwise, we will get a bit of a, it will get diversion. So, there are two classes of beings, the fallible, the fallible and infallible. In the material world, every living entity is fallible. And in the spiritual world, every living entity is infallible. As already explained, the Lord in His incarnation as Vyasadeva compiled the Vedanta Sutra. Sutra means formula. And formula, he, the whole Vedanta Sutra, if you read some of the verses of Vedanta Sutra, that's uh, Athato Brahma Jidnyasa. That is from Vedanta Sutra. We all know that. So, just on its own, if so the formula, if, you, if somebody gives just a formula, it will be very difficult to understand. Uh, for that, you should know how what, what is the derivation of that formula is. Um, and that to understand the Vedanta Sutra properly, with case studies, Vyasadev has given what? Srimad Bhagavatam. Here, the Lord is giving, in summary, the contents of Vedanta Sutra. He says that the living entities who are innumerable can be divided into two classes, the fallible and infallible. Um, the living entities are eternally separated parts and parcels of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When they are in contact with the material world, they are called Jiva Bhuta. And the Sanskrit word given here, Ikshara Sarva, Ikshara Sarvani Bhutani, means they are, in, they are fallible. Those who are in oneness with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, however, are called infallible. Oneness does not mean that they have no individuality. Um, yeah. Natvevaham jatunasam natvam neme janadipaha. Second chapter verse uh, we can refer to here. Individuality will always remain there. Lord has confirmed that in second chapter and then later on again and again because he says aham and mama. That means I am separate and you are separate. But that there is no disunity. They are all agreeable to the purpose of creation. 
Of course, in the spiritual world, there is no such thing as creation. But since the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Godhead as stated in the Vedanta Sutra is the source of all emanations, that conception is explained. Um, this is a bit vast topic, so uh, we won't get into the details of uh, what creation and what's that principle of eternity explained in our scriptures. Of course, the person who realizes the principle of eternity, that is a liberated person. Um, they're not connected to this material world. Sometimes, as Rupa Goswami says in Bhakti Rasambha Sindhu, even if the person is seen here in the material world with the physical body, that person is actually situated in the spiritual world. So they use the body in this world just for the service of the Lord, for the preaching purpose, for deity worship and so on. So that's what the reference related to the today's verse 1724 and for the Bhagavad Gita I could think of. Because this is a prayer, so after Ashwatthama um, used Brahmastra and that time Arjun, of course, he knew how to, um, how to fire Brahmastra, but still when Lord is there, um, his, his Sakha, then how he um, addresses the Lord um, what to do because it, he is guiding him uh, in, in later on in first canto itself you will see uh, how Arjun after the when Lord finishes his pastimes on this earth how Arjun describes that to Yudhishthira Maharaj it's a, it's a, it's a very very um, insightful very wonderful uh, prayer and the description Arjun gives later. So here, Krishna Krishna Mahavaho Bhakta Nama Bhayankara Tvameko Dayyamanana Apavargosi Sanskrite Sanskrite um, You, Arjun said, O oh my Lord, you are the almighty personality of Godhead. There is no limit to your different energies. Therefore, only you are competent to instill fearlessness in the hearts of your devotees. Everyone in the, in the flames of material miseries can find the path of liberation in you only. Um, in the month of Kartik, um, in, in this very auspicious time of the Pumahotsa, um, I think some of reciting these prayers and focusing on our sadhana, um, this is something really, really enlivening to all of us. So we'll just chant the second prayer. Tomadhyaha Purushaha Sakshit Ishwaraha Prakrute Paraha Mayam Yudasya Chitshaktya Kevalle Sthita Atmani You are the original personality of Godhead who expands himself all over the creation, creations and is transcendental to material energy. You have cast away the effects of the material energy by dint of your spiritual potency. You are always situated in eternal bliss and transcendental knowledge. When these great personalities, when they offer their prayers, um, they describe the characteristics of the Lord, the glories, the greatness, the opulence of the Lord. Why do they do that? Because it's not that they're reminding the Lord that, no, you're so great and then please do something for me. That's, that's not the case. Um, it's, it's their meditation. And in our case as well, these prayers are all for us, actually. So when we are offering different prayers to the Lord, um, this is the meditation, who that personality is, whom we are offering the prayers. So that is the reminder to all of us. And that's the reason these prayers are very, very important for our meditation. And we should be reciting multiple prayers. For example, um, when Queen Kunti offers her prayers, how to, um, how to worship the Lord, how to do his Manas Puja. 
शुण्वि गायंती गृणंती भीक्षण स्मरती नंदी तवे तम जिन स एव पश्यंत चिण तामक भव प्रवाहो परम पदाबुज सच अ ब्यूटिफुल पोएटिक प्रेयर शी हेज एंड सो लॉर्ड ऑफ प्रेयर्स गिव्स डिफरेंट मूड डिफरेंट अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड हाउ टू ऑफर दोज प्रेयर्स हाउ वॉट टू मेडिटेट ऑन एंड दैट्स वाई दीज ऑल द प्रेयर्स आर सो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग दीज प्रेयर्स इन नेक्स्ट फ्यू सेशन्स ऑल द हुमे आर आर द स्पीकर्स coming to tomorrow day after and all that so i think we have just 15 minutes and in 15 minutes uh, we will come to this point uh, that out of his causeless mercy descends to to the manifested world without being influenced by material modes of nature so how govardhan go puja govardhan puja is is there on on wednesday um and i thought after reading this purport gordhan puja is so related to this particular purport so we let's do our manas gordhan puja manas gordhan parikrama today uh, for 15 minutes and that could be something um very good meditation we can we can start from today till Wednesday, Thursday. Um, so, once in the spiritual world, um, Krishna and Radharani, um, they were just walking in one nikunja in the forest, and that time Radharani said that, "O oh, Priyatama," and he she offers her um, her love to the Lord, um, and she says that. can you create a place um which will be which will have everything and which will give us the pleasure of um all the facilities for performing our pastimes and lord says yes of course and all the gopis are there and then at that time the two things come from the lord's heart In, in that is in in vaikuntha in the in the golok dham so first is the spark and second is a drop spark is of course of course the fire and as a drop is the water so spark uh, falls down and then it becomes a pebble then from the pebble it becomes a stone from stone becomes a rock and that rock becomes a boulder and then a eventually it becomes a massive mountain so that mountain is govardhan and that drop becomes a stream and then from that stream it becomes a river and that river is yamuna devi so that's how their appearance is in the spiritual world of course because it is eternal that means there is no concept of creation there so it's just appearance and disappearing disappearance of anything in the spiritual world is or the manifestation we should say appearance has a time limit manifestation and unmanifestation is just to make the leela of the lord sweeter and um very newer all the time so um that's how the these two entities govardhan and yamuna devi appeared or they were there so when during the time of lord brahma once uh, in a day um, lord appears here in the material world as it is and that time uh, he was saying that in this particular universe of current uh, where we are in um the lord says now it's time to go there and that time rani said uh, yes but we need our govardhan and Uh, Yamuna Devi there, and that time because it was the creation time, and Lord said yes, of course they will be there with us, and at that time the both entities how they appeared here out of that we will focus more uh, on Govardhan today, that he appeared from the spiritual world as the son of Dronachal, and at a place called Shamali. 
it's not in this on in this earthly realm it's a different realm of uh, of the of all the, where there are many mountains there and one of the mountains in dronachal of course as we know mother ganga is a personality dronachal is also a personality so everything is a personality um so dronachal had a uh, had a son and that son's name uh, that son was was govardhan govardhan appeared as a son of of a mountain so one of the sages we all know out of saptarshi there was there is a one sage called pulastya and he was doing his meditation and he was traveling his base is always varanasi or kashi so he was there with dronachal he had his all the he was offered proper um respects and food and everything um by the personality dronachal and then he said to uh, when when uh, pulastya she was leaving dronachal said how can i serve you and then uh, dronachal said how can i serve you to pulastya pulastya muni pulastya rishi and he said if you now if you want to serve me uh, you can give me your son govardhan and govardhan being uh, associate of the lord or being the manif- expansion of the lord he immediately thought that this is a right opportunity to um to go to my original place um where i should belong to and that time um pulastir dronachal said that yes now you can you can ask uh, govardhan if he is happy then i can't say anything he was sad of course because his beloved son was uh, going to depart from from home and that time govardhan said yes but i have a condition that if um, if you, from this place to um to kashi uh shamali tukashi uh i i can't stop in between if i stop somewhere then i will be there and at that point of time um pulastya muni said yes i have lots of mystic powers i can and then when he was traveling in in space with uh, that govardhan on his palm suddenly where the vrindavan is um he had to um respond to the call of nature and then he put the gordhan parvat down and when he tried to lift it up again and then he couldn't so he asked gordhan what's wrong why are you not accompanying me and that time gordhan said look look at please remember the promise you have given me that once you put me down or um on or at one place keep keep somewhere i cannot move from there and that temple of the muni cursed him that it was uh, eight yojana uh, long six yojana tall and two yojana deep so one yojana is eight miles so 64 miles long then six yojana uh 56 miles tall and then 2 miles depth that massive mountain it was and he couldn't move that so you can we can imagine the mystic powers of pulastya muni and then the uh it the gordhan parvat remained at the at in the, in the where he, where it is now but pulastya muni yeah, cursed govardhan parvat because he was not he was not happy um because of this arrangement and he said that now every day now onwards that you will reduce your size um by one grain or um what that one mustard seed equivalent of one mustard seed and then we can see that now that massive mountain has become quite small uh, to what the description from the scripture says 
so then lot of things happen there is a gordhan parvat is there in the ram leela as well and then finally in the, in the krishna leela um the gordhan parvat is obviously the eternal associate of the lord and he has so many qualities the hair on his body is the grass and that grass is very aromatic it's very tender it's very nutritious it's a dukdha vardak it's it uh, produces lot of milk um in, uh, in the cows udder and that cows pour the milk over the gordhan parvat and that's why it enriches the grass and everything and the whole um, atmosphere there so gordhan parvat is called as haridas warrior hari means lord das means servant and warrior means the topmost so he is the topmost devotee of the lord and topmost devotee of the lord is always the expansion of lord himself like lord chaitanya is the topmost devotee of the lord but he is none other than lord himself um so in in the same way so how gordhan does uh, serves the lord like we do deity worship um gordhan parvat has a he he has always he makes the arrangement that sweet music is always played on the on the gordhan hill the birds uh, sing the sweet um songs then all the bumblebees there they also chant and <clears throat> of course those who are transcendently very elevated personalities the, the spiritually very ele- very elevated personalities they can hear that music and uh, we can associate with gordhan hill um for so many of their regular devotional services um gordhan parvat offers the place to sit uh, to lord uh for the krishna balram and all his uh, <clears throat> devotees so his rocks become very precious stones and the soil there becomes very soft and who has, who has done gordan parikrama they can relate to this um the fresh spring water from the gordan mountain um it gets mixed with the refreshing spices and herbs and that is when that is offered to the lord whenever he gets up in the morning uh, we offer madhupak or madhupark uh, that is the milk once the baby is delivered the calf is delivered by the cow which is mixed with the creamy yogurt honey and condiments like uh, cardamom and all that then gordan offers tambula which is the bitter leaves with fragrant tulsi leaves and so many other paraphernalia from the gordhan which is the mouth refresher um for aarti with the incense as well the aromatic herbs and everything is from gordhan and fragrant flowers gordhan offers uh lord rests on the petals of the flowers from the gordhan hill and every living entity uh, who is there in the gordhan um in lord's leela is engaged in the service of the lord all the time so this is what haridas varya is and that's what govardhan puja we are going to perform in on on wednesday um how we should worship govardhan uh, the same way lord krishna told nand maharaj just by circumambulating the govardhan hill um how it start that by taking bath in mansi ganga first and then come back to mansi ganga so that's what the worship of the gordan hill is mansi ganga as we know after killing the demon vatsasur <coughs> when lord's associates uh, said that now you can't play with us you have to take bath in the ganga and lord meditated uh, in in a mind ganga appeared and that's where the lord took bath um and later on when yashoda mai and nand maharaj they wanted to go for the pilgrimage and that time lord said no you don't have to go for pilgrimage anywhere vrindavan has every single place here so there is badrikashram there is ganga the, every single 
holy place on this earth, uh, in this universe, is there in Vrindavan. And if uh, there is a beautiful series, very detailed series given by uh, His Holiness Shivram Maharaj called Navraj Mahima. And that's where we have all the details of every single holy place in the entire universe and beyond universe. He has described it. It's, it's very beautiful. It's a very amazing meditative book, um, the series of books he has written. Um, so that's what, um, yeah, there is a temple of Haridev established by Lord's grandson, Vajranath, um, Nab, not Nath, um, um, Mansi Ganga, the deity is installed by him. And that's the Lord carrying Govardhan. That's the, that's the deity uh, there. So that's that's where gopis, all the all the Brajwasis and the gopis and gopas, they all meditate. They have always meditated on on that deity, um, in the presence and as well as in the absence of the Lord, apparent absence of the Lord. Lord is never absent for the Brajwasis. So that's what I thought today. Uh, because this is a very important point uh, in context with this particular verse and the purport for the Govardhan Puja. Um, and that's what our today's discussion was. Um, so we'll stop here. Are there any, yeah, it's two minutes past nine. Are there any questions or comments? No. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, please accept my humble obeisances. May I ask a question, please? Yeah, of course, of course. Thank you so much, first of all, for a fantastic, beautiful class. It really set us in the mood for P. Raj's forthcoming program. Um, I believe that in future, because this Giriraj is cursed and like holy rivers, all the pure places are, are not going to exist in future then how is it possible for the forthcoming generation of the devotees how will they be delivered I mean, they'll never know what giriraj looked like we were fortunate enough to take darshan but like river saraswati has gone back and similarly giriraj will one day also be disappeared by the curse of the muni so yeah. can you kindly explain uh, how will the fourth yeah. generation be delivered please thank you yeah, yeah. good question Thank you, Mataji. Um, that's, a, that's a good meditation. So, as we know, these first 10,000 years of uh, Kali Yuga are Suvarna Yuga, golden years. So, in that, the Gaurdhan Puja and everything will be of prominence to all the Vaishnavas. After 10,000 years, the Kali Yuga will start taking showing its effects quite, quite rapidly and that will go on for the total duration is 420,000 years plus. In that time again it will keep becoming smaller and smaller the entire place there the Radha Kund, what we see now as earlier it must be quite big now it has become smaller same Radha Kund and Sham Kund which are the eyes of Govardhan. So Govardhan is of the shape of, shape of peacock. So that peacock shape will becoming star will become smaller and smaller and smaller. So the devotees will always find um, how to worship Govardhan, and as long as devotees are there, Lord will make sure that they will be able to worship Govardhan. When devotees will not be there as Prabhupada says several times in his classes that after certain years there will, there will not be devotees on this earth. Um, so at that time Govardhan will disappear slowly. That's, that's what the answer to uh, your question for, in context with uh, what uh, Prabhupada and our Acharyas have, have explained. Thank you so much. That's very nice. Uh, I was just worried and I'm glad to hear your answer. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Mataji, before that, you will be you will be back to our original destination. So you not to worry about that. <laughs> okay. I was just worried about the future generation rather than ourselves, to be honest. So they will they will 
every devotee because as lord confirms ye yathamam prabhadyante tam satayo bhajamyam so if the devotee has a desire that means devotee has taken one step and lord will take 10 steps to fulfill the desires of the devotee so that's confirmed okay brilliant thank you so much hari krishna hari krishna any other question or comment hari krishna prabhuji don't have pronouns over so much thank you for all very wonderful very exhaustive class it was very 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 good thank you very interesting just a just a point to add to that uh, uh, response you gave wonderful response to the gordon um, of course gordon is is only disappearing from material vision not yeah. from spiritual vision so for devotees even though materially it may not be present spiritually it will be eternally present for yeah. anybody uh, any devotee in the future uh, they they will still be able to see gordon through a spiritual eyes yes yes yeah. but for some conditioned soul like me um, we will need to see something physical so yes but those elevated devotees they will have the association of gordon anyway um, but those devotees i'm not sure whether they will be manifested in the material world or not but you are right means of course yeah. for association as krishna's devotees will be present even throughout i mean there may be fewer because hopefully most of them are delivered in the next 10000 years with uh, with blessings such with wonderful devotees like yourselves but uh, nonetheless <laughs> anyway um, one other a couple of quick points as well it may be worth you um, just elaborating a little bit i know it's quite late so just maybe a two minute elaboration yeah. you might want to make Uh, for two things firstly with respect to uh, prayers you mentioned sir rupa swami gives us a, a formula that uh, when we pray we should have three components of prayer uh, we should uh, we should glorify the lord we should uh, tell the lord of our fallen condition and then whatever our prayer is that we are seeking his blessings for um, so we should break it down so maybe you might might want to elaborate on that and one last other thing also is just to um give a lot of devotees some devotees that may not know um, maybe newer to the forum mm-hmm. um that today is dantaras but it is commonly misunderstood within the indian community that dantaras is for uh, worshiping dan uh, which is uh, <laughs> some sort of form of lakshmi actually dantaras is for dantari as you know very well more than yes. most and uh, that we should actually be meditating on dhanvantri there today yeah. so it's just, just a little elaboration there sure. for minutes sure, sure. sure thank you prabhu yeah. ji krishna thank you thank you so yeah the first point of prayers is yes glorifying the lord meditating on him and then dainya uh, bodhika as shilesh prabhu was uh, giving the second point that yes i am my i we are the receivers that's what uh, yachna means yes um i i i am fallen conditioned soul so i am just your servant so establishing the position that he is the most merciful we are the receivers and the third and the last one is yes um offering our prayers that right? yes um the reasoning behind the prayers yeah so three points thank you very important now regarding the dhanvantari part yes of course lord dhanvantari is the manifestation of the lord as giver of the for the health for the well being uh, materially as well as spiritually and it's it's a vast science means not just ayurveda but there is lot more lord dhanvantari views so even the complete yoga sutra also comes by Uh, from lord dhanvantari so that's what today's uh, day is uh, dhanatra dhanatrayodashi um very important day um to start our uh, meditation because how lord dhanvantari appeared um in the samudra manthan um demons and demigods when they were churning the ocean and at that time so many uh jam so many personalities so many special um benedictions appeared in in that journey and one of the personalities who appeared 
फ्रॉम दैट समुद्र मंथन इज लॉर्ड धन्वंतरी एट द सेम टाइम फ्रॉम द समुद्र मंथन मदर लक्ष्मी ऑल्सो एपियर्ड एंड देर आर मेनी सहस्त्र लक्ष्मी सो ऑफ कोर्स लॉर्ड लक्ष्मी देवी ऑल्सो एपियर्ड फ्रॉम समुद्र मंथन शी इज द इटर्नल कॉन्सॉर्ट ऑफ द लॉर्ड एंड that is the occasion um some people of course when th- that's that's the reason uh, whenever lord is there his uh, pleasure potency his consort is also there so lord with lord dhanvantari uh, lakshmi devi must have appeared at that time as well and she has um as we can see i think in the um, later in the bhagavatam i think as far as i understand padma puran gives lot more detailed description of samudra mantan um but it is it is bit of a out of context for today um as chelish pro very rightly said that our meditation should be on the lord and not on not only on lakshmi devi um that is a wrong meditation that is like um chila propat says and all our acharyas says that is typical ravan mentality that i want lakshmi but i don't want the lakshmi pati i don't want vishnu so that is a wrong mentality and we should be careful about it so thank you shailesh prabhu for reminding very important point yeah i think that's basically it for today Yeah, uh, if there is nothing else, then we will stop here. And thank you very much, all the devotees. One chagal patru bhesha kripa sindhu bhya ebhja pati ta na 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 thank you Prabhu ji. Thank you very much. Hey, Jay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Prabhu ji, for your elaborate you. class. Hare Thank Krishna. You. Hare Krishna, Madhuri ji. Hare Krishna. Ah, stop sharing.